Now this is when the centre of the ring can be quite a lonely place for the judge waiting for the dogs to come in. And first we've got the winner of the imported register classes. They don't have classes at Crofts yet, they will soon. This is the little Swedish Lapland. Typical Spitz type and a breed that's just beginning to gain some strength here in the UK. Nice lap of honour for them. And, and used for herding reindeer, so quite a different environment here in the big rig at Crofts. I certainly don't spy any reindeer, Frank. So here we go, the beginning of the pastoral group, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog taking to the green carpet. And now the, it's the Australian Cattle Dog. The little Australian healer. Followed by the Australian Shepherd, such a glamorous breed. Uh, very popular, the Bearded Collie coming in now. And for the first time, this one all the way from Slovenia, the Beauceron. Classes at Crufts for the very first time today. The first of the Belgian Shepherd Dogs. This is the Gronendal. Followed by the Lacanois. And here's the Malinois. And the last of the four varieties, also the most popular at the moment, the Taburin. Huge entry today of Border Collies, and here's the triumphant winner. And this is the Briard Best of Breed. Catalan Sheepdog from Spain. Ever popular, a big round of applause for the Rough Collie. Now the, the Smooth Collie coming in, full of energy. This is the Estrella Mountain Dog. Here's the Finnish Lapund. Big round of applause for the German Shepherd Dog, of course, one of the most popular in this group. The Hungarian Pooley. Can you make out the head and the tail there? <laughs> and here's a much bigger white cousin. This one's been through the wash, a Commodore. And now the jaunty little Lancashire healer coming in. The beautiful Marema Sheepdog. And it is beautiful. The Norwegian Buhund. Such a popular breed, this, the Old English Sheepdog. In a smaller version, it's the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Power and grace in one large animal. And here's the Pyrenean Sheepdog. Light and nimble. The smiling Sammy, the Samoyed. And the Shetland Sheepdog, the Blue Merle. This is the Swedish Valhund. Here's the Turkish Kangal. First time with classes at Gruffs. And the first of our two corgis, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. And here's the Pembroke Corgi. So now... Vic Salt is going to take a look at his groups. First chance he gets to have a look at all these best of breed winners gathered together. Just getting first impressions here. Looking at their outlines. Does anything take his eye as a really super example of its breed? First impressions can be important. Usually the outline and balance of a breed silhouette tells you whether it's got the correct breed type and that's the first thing they're going to look for. Breed type, then they have to move soundly and be well constructed and be at ease and perform well on the night. It's what makes the great dogs stand out from the good dogs. And 
And you'll notice as you look at many of these pastoral breeds a lot of similarities because, of course, their function is very much as flock guards and herds. They are animals that, that move livestock for their owners and that guard them when they're left out on the hills. And because the function is the same, many of the dogs have a very similar blueprint. But what a wonderful diversity there is in, in the group. There's the big dogs, the heavy dogs, and this light and elegant Norwegian boo hunt then the massively hairy old English sheepdog. And all those coats, you can guarantee, it's the dog version of wearing a really decent wax cotton jacket. Right down to the end of the line now, we've got those little Shetland sheepdogs. And the Swedish Valhund. And the corgis at the far end of the line. So the first of our breeds for a closer look now, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog. And this one is a champion both in Holland and America. It's a dog that's been shown a lot. This is a Turkish flock guard, deep chested, big dog, very powerful, fawn with a black mask mostly. And this is a dog that's designed to be out on the hills all day. It needs to be rugged and really robust. And although fawn is the perhaps the most popular colour, all colours are allowed, including party colours. We'll see later the close relative, the Turkish Kangal dog, where the colour is limited to one colour. That thick coat is completely weatherproof, so this animal can stay out on the hills all day, all night, looking after his master's flock. the Australian cattle dog. Now, this is a breed which is bred for both herding and guarding. And in its native country, it's sometimes known as the Australian healer, which tells you how it used to work with the livestock, nipping at the heels to drive them on. This one is a blue speckle, that, that's the color with rich tan markings. They also come in a red speckle. They're hardy, they're muscular, and very strongly built. And this one's come all the way from Italy to compete here at Crufts today. Such a characteristic head, those ears work all the time. I, I've seen them working in Australia, They're, they are so keen to work. Now this is a real show dog, the Australian Shepherd Dog. This is uh, um, developed in the United States, even though it's called the Australian Shepherd. Solid, medium-sized dog. Above all, it must be well-balanced, agile and strong. It's a herding animal, needs to push that flock along. So they've become hugely popular in the show ring in this country. Now the bearded collie coming from a huge entry. Now, this is a breed which originated in Scotland. It's a native breed there where it was used for herding. Now hugely popular. It's very good at obedience. It can still work. Underneath that well-groomed coat, there's a dog which has to be functional. They're not heavily bodied. They're a cylindrical rib cage and there's low head carriage when they move. Very typical. And this might look like a glamorous show dog here at Crufts in the big ring, but it's a very hardy working shepherd as well. And a wonderful temperament, wonderful temperament. Broad skull, strong foreface. This is the Beauceron, new to the Crufts big ring. Another shepherd, this one also a really important flock guard, originally called the Bas Rouge, which translated means red stockings, and you can see why. Big, solid dog, very powerful, loyal, and a great worker. 
And although this one's a black and tan, we'll sometimes see some Harlequin markings in the coat. And these dogs have big double dew claws at the back on their hind legs. Helps them to grip when they're running across scree slopes in the mountains. The first of the Belgian Shepherd varieties here, the Gronendal, that's distinctive by its black coat. Um, the Belgian Shepherd dog, four varieties differentiated by coat and colour. Here the Gronendal, they're elegant, they're refined, quite lightly built and brisk moving. This one's come from Belgium to compete, which is excellent. Long head there, very typical of the breed. The standard is the same for all four of the varieties. It's the coat and the colour that differs. And lovely refinement in the head. Wedge-shaped head, almond-shaped eyes, sharply pricked ears, a picture of alertness on the move. Now, this is the second of the varieties, the little Lacanois, name taken from the Chateau de Lacan, a royal residence of the Queen Marie Henriette, who favoured this variety above all others. And the coat is essentially harsh, wiry and dry. It shouldn't actually be curly, but you can really see the crispness of it there. Now, this is the least numerous of the varieties, but my favourite, because they've got such great character with their, 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 their hair around their eyes and wonderful, great character in them. And this little dog's called Thalys and has come all the way from the Netherlands to compete. And beautiful movement, absolutely accurate on the move and a lovely top line and tail carriage. I like this very much. And ah, the Malinois, the Malinois here, uh, showing typical uh, touch of alertness there. Not quite happy in the, in the surroundings sometimes happens in the big ring when they're not used to all the lights and the crowds but now just picking up a little more confidence again it should be the similar but it's a, a, a harsh dense coat hugely popular with the police and the forces and such a shame that it's unsettled because of course that show of temperament is something that will count against it in the big ring here That's at Croft. rather put pay to the chances there i think and uh, a pity Now, this is the most popular of the four varieties now, with 87 shown here at Crufts this year, the Tervuren. The coat here is long, straight, really abundant, with red fawn or almost a reddish-grey with a black overlay and mask. Very spectacular to look at. And this looks extremely nice. There's a wonderful silhouette, short in the body, this slight rounded croup, this lovely elegance and refinement in the head. I like this one very much. And the movement's very characteristic, isn't it? Isn't it? That the action, as we would call it, the way in which those legs move, it's quite clipped and short. It's a brisk action, which is what the standard calls for. Now, here's the Border Collie on the move. Now, huge entry, two judges, one judging dogs, one judging bitches, and this is the, the winner. Is there anything a Border Collie can't do? They're so versatile. Obedience, working with the sheep, agility, and, of course, a very typical head carriage, dropping its head on the move, which is a trait of many of the working sheepdogs. There were 98 Briards shown at Crofts this year. This one's called Forte, originating from the province of Brie in France, as its name would suggest. An agile and swift dog, strong enough to herd over all terrain and guard flocks against predators like foxes and wolves. This one's black, where a few white hairs are permissible, but there should be no white markings. But they also come in shades of fawn. Sometimes the fawn has black shading as well. The handsome working dog, good substance under there. This is a breed also which has the double dew claws on the rear legs, which is a breed feature. And that little crochet hook to the tail, which is much prized in the breed. And a matte, dry coat. 
not a soft coat, it's got to be weatherproof. Now here we have the Catalan Sheepdog, fairly new in the British Isles, comes from the Andorra region of Spain where it was used as a herder or garder. It is hardy, adaptable, but it does settle well to family life with sensible ownership. Again, functional, that weatherproof coat, strongly built underneath. Using its nose very characteristically there, that black nose and lovely round dark eyes give this dog such a super expression. Yes, it's strong, but not heavy. It has to be agile and athletic to do the job. And again, typical head carriage just dropping low as it gains momentum. This beautiful looking dog is called Sound. They've come from Suffolk to compete across today against 257 other rough collies. They're originally thought to have been developed from sheep herding do dogs brought uh, to Scotland all the way back by the Romans and now one of the most popular in this particular group. Now it's nice to see a collie moving out, using its hocks well, striding out well. This wonderful elegance in the head, this long, clean foreface. Almond shaped eyes giving it a very soft, affectionate expression. A very popular pet, but if you're thinking of taking on a rough collie, remember that coat takes a great deal of looking after. You'll have a comb in your hand most of the time. And here's the smooth collie, uh, by no means as popular as its rough counterpart, but again, almost identical standards, but without all the grooming, so there's a big advantage. The other thing I would say about the smooth collie, wonderful outgoing temperaments, very active, highly intelligent, and I'm, I'm surprised they're not more popular. Until the 60s, these were, could be interbred. You could have the smooth and the rough coming from the same litter, and you could mate one with the other. Such a super breed, this. And this one's come all the way from Finland to compete today. So a dog that was originally developed here, but is strong elsewhere in Europe too. This is the Estrella Mountain Dog, a powerful flock garden herd, originally coming from the Estrella Mountains in Portugal. Look at the thickness of that coat. This dog can deal with extremes of both heat and cold while it's out on the hills with the flocks. They do come in a long coated and also a slightly shorter coated, a much flatter coated variety. And these are strongly built. And we can see the, the little neat fold back of the ear, this little turn back, this rose ear, is one of the breed features. But more important is the substance and working ability. It has to be well built to do its job. And how lovely for our judge in the main ring tonight that Tuga has come all the way from his native Port Portugal to be judged here. Now the Finnish Laphund, the herd of reindeer in its native Finland, and it's still used for su as such in Finland. It's got spitz characteristics, by that I mean it's got a wedge-shaped head, sharply pricked ears, this high-set tail plumed over its back, and this weatherproof coat. Quite compact in the body, well ribbed under the coat, strong legs and feet, and it's going to go like a dog that's fit enough to herd reindeer. And that coat's what we call a double coat in that it has a harsher, coarser outer coat to repel the wet and a really lovely, dense, soft undercoat to keep the dog nice and warm whilst it's working. And this one is a champion in Finland, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg. It's an international champion and now best to breed at Crufts. And just look at those snowshoes for all the dogs that have to work in the cold. They've got these wonderful big hairy feet.
Now we move on to the German Shepherd dog. Lots of controversy about breed type in this bike. What, what we mean by that is that originally this dog was called the Alsatian and was a much more a straighter back, similar looking in the head, but a very different animal on the move. Today we have these more European looking dogs. Mind you, this one's come from Dorset. <laughs> from a very successful kennel down there with a, a very famous handler. The movement of the German Shepherd is absolutely classic and very important. They call it gating, the dog moves out on a long lead and should power its way round the ring independently as it would be expected to do in the field. And now the Hungarian Pooley. Now, this is one of the, the, the nimble dog of the Hungarian uh, uh, sh sheepdogs. <laughs> Underneath those co that corded coat, there's a dog which is lightly built. They weren't born with cords like that. It starts off as loose curls and then develops into these cords. Underneath that, it's quite wirily built, quite light in the bone and nimble. Brisk action. I love the description of the cords on the head for this breed. It says they should fall gracefully like an umbrella over the dog's face. The neck rather short, so it's in the, the head and neck and shoulders are all blended into one. It should be very compact. Now the Commodore is a spectacular dog, a similarly corded coat like the Pooley, but with the size of it, I should imagine if you bath this, it'll take a week to dry. It was a flock guard originally, and um, you can see why. It would blend in with a flock of sheep, but then a wolf would get the most dreadful surprise if it tried to be an interloper. Now, this is a, not so much a dog, but a way of life, because to get one looking like this, and it is in immaculate condition, strongly built underneath that the coats always white with this particular breed and the adult coat might start like fluff as a puppy but it has to be handled so carefully to get it to cord like that you can imagine there's never going to be a big market for commodore puppies because it is a, a breed which requires dedication and a lot of care Now, this Lancashire healer on the table, and one of my favourites in the group, they're so characteristic, full of character. And it said that they were developed from a cross between corgis, which were used to drive cattle to market in Lancashire, Ormskirk, and the corgi was crossed with a Manchester Terrier, and it's got some of the qualities of both. Black and tan, wedge-shaped head, and a wonderful character. And this might be a tiny little dog, but it's going to brook no trouble from a herd of cattle. It'll be in behind those heels, nip, 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 and get them moving along. I can tell you that they're wonderful to live with. And again, we see on the tan markings, one of the prized features is a, a thumbprint, same as in the Manchester, a black thumbprint on the tan markings, one of the breed features. This glorious animal with those big dark eyes, big black nose, is a Maremma sheepdog. That coat is highly weather resistant, deep, thick, double, and will keep this dog either cool or warm in absolutely any circumstances. That head is a conical shape. It's supposed to be large in proportion to the body, helped by all that hair. Now, it's a breed that has fallen out of favour a little bit in the British Isles, but this one, coming all the way from Italy, is quite beautiful. Lovely proportions and balance, beautiful quality in the head, and the dark pigmentation around the eyes and the nose, which give it this beautiful expression. Great quality. I like this one very much. Now, the Norwegian Buhund. 
the, fa the farm dog of Norway. The word boo means homestead. This is the dog of the homestead. He was used as a herder and as a guard dog. That weatherproof coat, high set tail, good length of leg. They're not heavily built. They, they're quite refined in their build with a degree of elegance. Moving out well. Using those ears, listening to the handler. Typical spits tight with that wedge-shaped head, prick ears, tail over the back and always alert. Great alertness and very good carriage here, it's carrying itself well. Rico is an old English sheepdog. They're often called the bobtail sheepdog because uh, often their tail is completely absent naturally. This is a bold, very trustworthy, biddable breed, and underneath that coat is, is an animal with great power and stamina to work in the field. Symmetry in balance is what we're looking for here. Ease of movement as it strides out. Underneath that coat, there's barrel ribs. It's a, it's a capacious dog. It should have big ribs to give it stamina, a strong skull and foreface, and this wonderful crispness to this blue coat. Effortless movement, and you can see the characteristic, almost bear-like roll there as it moves. And something in a smaller mould now. We can see a similarity with this is the Polish Lowland Sheepdog, known affectionately in Poland as the Nizini, which is a short term of the Polish. Now, this is often born tailless or will have a stumpy tail. Now, it's, we see a stumpy tail, slight slump, stumpy tail here. Cobby and compact. And the whole body's covered in a, a long, dense, shaggy, harsh coat. They have a really long history, this breed, probably including the puli, the Hungarian puli that we saw earlier, crossed with longer coated herding dogs. The Pyrenean mountain dog, one of the giants of the pastoral group. This one's come from Sweden to compete today, often known as the Great Pyrenees as well. They're native to France and they are quite magnificent in their bearing. That black pigment against the beautiful, crisp, pale coat. It's profuse and double, can have little patches of lemon or badger on it. Size and substance, a really impressive dog is what we're looking for here. And uh, they've got size, a, a good length of leg. They have to be too heavy because they have to be agile. There's a degree of elegance about the Pyrenean mountain dog. The head, rather like a bear, refined bear's head, with lovely pigmentation and almond eyes. And still used to guard flocks out in the mountain ranges in France. Still very much a sheep guard and herd, a working dog. And now the Pyrenean Sheepdog. It's, we have the long-coated variety here. We, there is a shorter coat, which we don't have in the UK. This is agile and lightly built and very energetic. Alertness is in its head, its ears, which are very mobile, and again, a crisp, weatherproof coat. Light, nimble, and athletic. Described as a dog that should have a distinctly windswept look, which I think is a, a, a super description. Yes, it has to maintain a rustic quality to it. We don't want these working dogs, these pastoral dogs, over-groomed. They have to retain that rustic look and that rustic ability to work well. And like so many of the sheepdogs, alert all the time, using its ears and a slight dropped head carriage as the pace increases. The smiling Sammy, how could you not fall for that wonderful face? Typical Spitz type again, the wedge head, prick ears, tail carried over the back, but just look at that profuse coat.
The outer coat can even have little silver tips, but they should be pure white with a, maybe a little biscuit or cream mixed in and always with the dark pigment that makes them stand out. We've had a lot of good Samoids winning high awards at Crufts in the past few years, and this one again looks extremely smart. As you say, Jessica, they call the laughing cavaliers, these dark pigmented lips, lovely, lovely nose. And here is the Shetland Sheepdog, a blue merle and a big winner in this country. It's won several pastoral groups already and is a best in show winner. The Shetland Sheepdog should be light and effortless on the move. This lovely clean quality in the head, with lovely chiseling. They were first shown at Crufts in 1906, where they were classified as a miniature collie. But On the table now, the intelligent face of the Swedish Valhund. Don't mistake this for a corgi. Slightly long, I know, but on much heavier, taller legs than you'd see in a corgi. Similar in the head, though. Long, clean, blunt wedge that head should be. It's a small and powerful dog, though. A very enthusiastic worker with a coat of medium length, steely gray, with that lighter markings that are so characteristic in this breed. Yes, they, they bear some resemblance to the corgi, but they also bear resemblance to the Norwegian elk hound it's, it's, with the sharp features of the head. The harness markings over the shoulders, we can see clearly there, very much prized feature in the breed. And that head, a long, clean, blunted wedge clearly defined mask and now here is the Turkish Kangal dog the first time they've had classes at Crufts only recently separated from the Anatolian Shepherds here is a dog which of a mastiff type strong tall and substantial they were flock guards and used to live a nomadic life with with their owners the shepherds they could live out in all weathers and as a fairly new breed here at Crufts Freya managed to beat six other Turkish Kangal dogs to win her place here in the group ring at Crufts Size and substance, a powerful worker. And this is the one that has to be fawn with a black mask, the Turkish Kangal dog. These are the most delightful little pastoral dogs. This is the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, not just a Pembroke with a tail. There are subtle differences in the way the head looks. Those ears, prick ears on this dog, have a rounded tip and a much larger in proportion. Quite heavy boned and the fox brush tail an absolute must, a characteristic of this breed. It's said that they used to be called the yard dog because it was a canine folklore that they used to measure 36 inches from nose to the end of its tail. They are slightly longer than the Pembroke cousin and of course lengthened even more by that long tail. Free and active movement despite being close to the ground. Plenty of drive, which means those back legs are propelling the dog forwards. And it's the Pembroke Corgi now, this lovely foxy head and expression. This wedge shaped head, those ears, alert, beautiful eye shape. It's a pity that this breed has now fallen into a population decline it's now a native vulnerable breed why I don't know but here we have a lovely quality they're very adaptable as pets and of course were used originally to, as healers to nip the cattle as on the way to market and that's a thick coat 
weatherproof, but that has the most extraordinary undercoat. When you're grooming a corgi, you could get enough out to stuff a pillow, generally. Beautiful level top line, a body of medium length. Strong legs and feet, very alert and in peak condition. You can see the quality of coat there. And it's that little face, that expression that has won this breed so many admirers in the past. Hopefully it will again. So Vixalt taking a look at his best of breed winners in this pastoral group again. Who will he decide is going to be our next group winner? Now, just reminding himself of the, he's had hands-on examination. We've only seen them from a distance. He's had his hands-on to see what the structure's like, the confirmation or anatomy under the coat. And of course, that's especially so with so many of these pastoral breeds being so heavily coated. What we might think looks wonderful from ringside when the judge puts their hand on the dogs and maybe finds that when they feel the bones in the skeleton, they're not quite in the right place. It's not quite made the way it should be. That'll be the reason why that dog doesn't get pulled out. Little Lancashire healer. Beautiful Marema. Buhan standing to attention there. The Greater Pyrenees. Pyrenean mountain dogs, such a beautiful outline. The little smiling Sammy moving down towards the end of the line. Turkish Kangal dog. And the two varieties of Corgi. Now, I think this is going to be a hard one to sort. So, Vic Salt moving to the head of the line. Who's he going to pull first? I think it's the Australian Shepherd comes out and the bearded collie. On down the line, there are our Belgian Shepherd dogs. Having another look at the Briard there. The Briard's the coming Briard. in. I passing the smooth collie and calling in the Estrella Mountain Dog. And, and the, the German Shepherd. The German Shepherd. And the Hungarian Pooley. Norwegian Buhan, very alert. Such a beautiful outline. That dog hasn't stopped showing the whole time it's been in here. And the little Polish Lowland. And the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Oh, I'm glad that's in. And the Samoid is called out. Now, I think we have the shortlist there. Ah, calling in the Shetland Sheepdog. So, help. so we have our shortlist, the other best of breed winners now leaving the ring. Of course, they're all winners, they've all won best of breed at Crufts, some of them over huge entries. Now the work really starts separating these. Eleven in the shortlist, that's quite a... Here is the Australian Shepherd. Only 20 months old, this dog. Austin Powers, he's known as at home, and powering up and down the ring there. And lives just a few miles from the NEC, at the famous Dial in Kennels, famous for their beagles as well. So they've had a marvellous show. And being given the chance now to go right the way around the ring, show its movement as into best advantage. And they're always impressive, smart movers. This is Fame, three years old. Belongs to Justine Waldron from Sumbry on Thames. Bearded Collie representative being given the chance to move again. Beautiful expression there. Again. Flowing coat. And Looking in such super condition, isn't it? And a good performance here in the final runoff is what might sway the judge. Again, just dropping the head correctly. She looks super. This is 40. Six year old dog. Champion in France as well as here in the UK. 
and was imported uh, to, from Poland and lives in a famous kennel in Wales, the Gilkoru Kennel. Handler moving at just the right pace, the dogs coordinated and balanced and holding a top line. Too many handlers rush their dog. However, here's another good handler, the... The Estre Estrella Mountain Dog. Again, going collectedly, carrying itself well. Belongs to Luis Ramos. They've come all the way from Portugal to compete, so from the native country of the Estrella Mountain Dog. Tuga. Just two and a half years old, and of course, big dogs like this take a long time to mature, so probably not even coming to his best. Now the German Shepherd. Famous champion bitch, comes from the the Cullen's Kennel in Dorchester, in Dorset, and with handler Steve Cox here. And he has the skill of letting the dog go out on a loose lead and really showing its gating powers. This reach in front, this hard top line, and using its hops well. This is the little Hungarian Puli, Charlotte. Eight years old, so from the veteran class, triumphed over all the other poolies who've competed here at Crufts today to take best of breed. And it's bred in Australia. The very famous cord maker kennel have had champions all over the world. And this is Camilla Tell, the co-owner from Australia, here to handle it. Norwegian Buhan now, very smart, elegant, great alertness here. He's never lost his composure, always alert here. Just collecting the dog so it doesn't move too fast. You don't want any galloping. We want to see the best movement possible in the group ring at Kraft. The They're the cobby and compact Polish lowland sheepdog. This is a big winner. It's already won two pastoral groups in the last year from the famous My Beards Kennel. Diane Mottram, one of the breeders who was responsible for developing this breed in the UK and bringing them to the fore like this. And I do like this Pyrenean mountain dog. It's got just the right degree of elegance with substance. Not cumbersome. Beautiful expression from the darkly pigmented eyes. Tail carriage, making the wheel. Now that is a breed feature. The tail comes round and makes a wheel-like shape over its back when the dog is alert. I'm just giving instructions to the Samoid. This is Jaeger, two years old. They've come from Cumbria to show today. Belongs to Andrea Kirkwood and Nicola Carruthers. The smiling Sammy, always a contender in the group ring at Crufts. These are such fantastic show dogs. Yes, and I believe he's become a champion today which is a great way to do it at Grubb. So when your third challenge certificate, you need three challenge certificates to make a champion. He's done it today. Now the last of our shortlist. This is the little Shetland Sheepdog, Sid. Seven years old, another one who will have come from the veteran class. This 43 challenge certificates. So as you say, you only need three. <laughs> a blue merle, this clear blue, which should be marbled with black. Light and effortless on the move. And this dog looks in such superb condition tonight. So those are our finalists. Who is going to be our next group winner? The pastoral group winner for Crust 2015. The boards are out. Vic Salt taking a final look at his lineup. And he's moving purposefully to the bearded collie takes the group. Fame, champion, victory wins, ghost whisperer for Snowmead. Imported from France. Oh, the Pyrenean mountain dog, a very jubilant and happy Pyrenean mountain dog going into second place. <laughs> Delighted about that. The German Shepherd takes group three. And group four goes to the smiling Sammy. And an, 
and another very happy to get a place. Well, if anybody said that show dogs don't know when they've won, they understand what that applause means. So, Bearded Collie wins the pastoral group and will come back on Sunday to compete for best in show. Bred in Italy in the famous Victory Wins Kennel. She looks so calm and composed, doesn't she? Unlike the owner. <laughs> Now we have the presentation of the trophy. I'm sure for the winner of the pastoral group, the presentation of the trophy is, oh, oh yes, there's a big cup. Actually, I'm still concentrating on the fact that my beautiful dog has just won the group at Crufts. Two shades of green, the Kennel Club colors. Something to treasure, a rosette from Crufts. What a beautiful picture, that Pyrenean mountain dog. Such a gorgeous outline. Beautiful. German Shepherd taking group three. Very alert. <laughs> Smiling Sammy, as always, has got something to say about the matter. <laughs> You're supposed to be giving that rosette to me. And there we have a lap of honour from our third group winner, the pastoral group winner, champion victory wins, ghost whisperer for Snowmead, the bearded collie.